this tutorial will show you how to build a clicker app using TinyWebDB. So to get started, I've already loaded the Clicker WebDB template. And the first thing I want to do is I want to rename this as uh, some other name so that I don't damage the template in case I need to go back to it later. All right, so let's have a look at the user interface. It's all provided to us here. We need to add three additional components though, so let's add those. We're gonna go to the user interface drawer and add a notifier block. And then we're going to go next to the sensor drawer and grab a clock. And then of course we're gonna need a tiny web DB. So that is in the storage drawer. And we're gonna drag that tiny web DB down here. So we've got our three non-visible components. With respect to the clock, we're going to change the time interval to three seconds. And this is going to refer to how frequently we're going to pull the database to update our values. We'll talk more about why it's three seconds later, but for right now, let's just initialize it to that value. Now let's go over to the blocks section. With this clean slate, let's start off by defining some variables. And one of the main goals in our app is to create these variables and try to keep them in sync with whatever values are in the database. So if some of the user updates the database, we want the database values to eventually percolate into these variables. Likewise, if we change these variables, we want to make sure we get their new values stored in the database as soon as possible. So that's going to be an important idea inside of our app. Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to set up the procedures to read and write to the database. So let's uh, create a couple of procedures here. So I'll put one over here and another one over here. And inside here, we're going to put some uh, TinyDB commands. So let's go over to the TinyDB blocks and we see that there's a get value over here. And I'm going to just duplicate this block because we have two values that we're going to fetch and I need a tag. Uh, likewise, we need to create a procedure to store some values and we're going to do that with some tiny DB commands as well. Let's go with this store value. Okay, so those are the two main ones we have. We also want to set up, uh, while we're doing work for the database, we want to set up the error handler for the database. So let's look one more time at the tiny web DB blocks and you see that there is this web service error event handler and let's just put that in there and we'll use the notifier that we had in our code uh, right here and we'll just echo the message that we get if we ever get an error message we'll just show that on the screen so the user can see what kind of uh, database error we received. The next block we're going to encode, which is the got value block, is the single most important block in our design. And that is the event handler that is triggered when the database responds uh, to a fetch and uh, gives us some information. Now recall that the main difference between TinyWebDB and TinyDB is that in TinyDB, uh, it's a synchronous event, so we, we read it like a variable, but here we don't know when this got value is going to get triggered, so we need to structure this code so that uh, when it uh, comes back from the database and the database is telling us that there's a value uh, that we asked for that's been uh, delivered, uh, we want to take uh, the appropriate action to uh, take that information and load our variables and update our display and, and do those types of things. So you see that when the got value is triggered, the, the tiny web DB tells us what tag triggered it and what new value it is that it's telling us about. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put some if statements to try and figure out which tag, whether it was the agree tag or the disagree tag that is has arrived. And we're going to use that if statement to figure out which of these variables, uh, the agree count or the disagree count that we need to update in our app as a result. So let's go over to this logic block and get an equals block here. And uh, let's look and see if the first tag got returned. And the other case we'll handle will be extremely similar to this. So let's just uh, duplicate this whole block and put it here. And uh, we'll just change this to the disagree. We've got the basics now of our got value block. But to this, we're going to add just a little bit of error handling in case we accidentally get some garbage back from the database. 
Now in both of these cases, we're expecting a number. We're expecting uh, to get the number of people who agree with the question and the number of people who disagree. But if instead of getting a number, we get some uh, gobbledygook or some string, uh, we want to make sure that we set these values to some safe value. So to do that, I'm going to put an if statement inside the if statement. And, uh, and in here, what we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure that this value that we got from the database is indeed a number. Now if you go over to the math blocks, there is a block there called is number, And uh, you can use that uh, to figure out if something is a number or not. And this is a block we have not used before. If this thing turns out not to be a number, what we want to do is we want to set this variable to a safe value. Okay, and we want to do the same thing now for the uh, disagree block as well. Now we've got our got value pretty much the way we want it. Let's go back to our designer blocks for a second and have a look at our display. You can see that there are some labels here that display the number of agree votes and the number of disagree votes. What we want to do now in our blocks editor is we want to create a procedure to update that display. The next question we need to ask ourselves is, where in our app should we call this update display? Well, certainly each time we store information that's new into the database, we need to call update display right there. Likewise, if we get information from the database, uh, we're going to need to call update display uh, once again. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up this clock timer to fetch the database values every three seconds. And the reason we pick three seconds is because if we pull more frequently than that, we're going to overburden the database, especially as all of our classmates are probably going to be hitting the same database at the same time. Likewise, if we pick a number that's much larger than three seconds, we're going to eventually lose sync with the database. The next event handler we're going to program is what happens when the screen initializes. And all we want to do there is once again fetch the values from the database. Now uh, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to program the agree and disagree buttons and also the reset button. Let's look at the uh, agree button. So when the user presses the agree button what we want to do is we want to increment this agree count and then we want to save the new value in the database. And we want to do pretty much the same thing now for the disagree button. Uh, lastly, we want to program the reset button to set all these values back to zero. And that completes our basic clicker app. But before we leave this tutorial, let's discuss one more important principle. If we look at the database that we're going to be using, keep in mind that this is a shared database. So you and your classmates and perhaps several other students throughout the country will be using the same database at the same time. Uh, what does that mean? Well, you see we have these simple agree and disagree tags. And you can uh, pretty quickly realize that if we all use the same tags, we're going to end up overwriting each other's data. Uh, so to avoid that, when you build your app, instead of using a simple tag like this, you need to customize it and make it unique. So for example, if your name was Bob, you might choose to uh, change the tag to be something like this. Mm -hmm.